I'm Doug Apple, and my heart is on fire. Luke 24, 32. Here's one of my all-time favorite Bible verses, and it's probably not one you'd think of. Actually, it's probably one you'd skip over in a rush to get to something more meaty. If my wife and I watch a movie, I often tell her to enjoy the opening shots, even while the credits are rolling, because these are often some of the most beautiful camera shots in the whole world. A lot of times, it's panoramic, flying over mountains or over a city, or it's fascinating views of nature or of people all over the world. And they're almost always happy. Even if the movie takes a darker turn, it usually starts out happy and joyful. And that brings us to the opening scene in Luke chapter 8. In verse 1, it says that Jesus went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. I can hear the children shouting for joy. I can see the crowds gathering with excitement. Someone begins making music. Someone's clapping. Someone has a tambourine. Some don't even know what's going on, but they get excited too because enthusiasm is contagious. And at the center of it all is Jesus. Jesus is coming. And he's not alone. Luke 8 says the 12 are with him, his disciples. And it's not just the crusty fishermen, but women are with him as well. And some prominent women at that. I mean, it's basically a fun, happy, exciting road show out on tour. And they're coming to your town. For some reason, I hear Jesus quieting the crowd at some point, calling to them, Friends! Friends! I have some good news! And the crowd settles in, and Luke 8 says that Jesus preaches and brings them the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. But then there seems to be a gap. I mean, the Son of God, the Christ, the Anointed One, is speaking and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. What exactly did he say? Oh, I want to know what he said. What were these glad tidings of the kingdom? Fortunately, we have many of the words of Jesus recorded in the Bible, and we can glean from them the glad tidings of the kingdom. Truly, one of the most powerful glad tidings of the kingdom is that it's not based on money or class or lineage. The world has always had rich people and entitled people, but Jesus said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. What? That's not how the world works. But guess what? That's how the kingdom works. Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Those are glad tidings. No matter your class, your race, your income, your education, your gender, your age, or even your appearance, the kingdom of God is for you. Another glad tiding of the kingdom is that it's a kingdom of love. Jesus taught us that God loves us, and he taught us that we should love one another. In Luke 6.35, Jesus said, Love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind. Another glad tiding of the kingdom is forgiveness. God offers us forgiveness, and He calls us to forgive others. Forgiveness is a hallmark of the kingdom of God. In the Bible, we read over and over again Jesus saying these words, Your sins are forgiven. Now those are glad tidings. Another thing Jesus said was things like, Go in peace, and peace be with you. In John 16, 33, Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Luke 1, 79 says, To guide our feet into the way of peace. Living at peace with God and peace with each other, this is a cornerstone of the kingdom. Hope, joy, kindness, gentleness, patience, faithfulness. I could go on and on but I encourage you to open the Bible for yourself. Read those red words of Jesus and read them for what they were, the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. May God bless you today. I'm Doug Apple.